Do you guys know what TED stands for? Technology, Entertainment and Design. I'm the guy they hired for technology. And as you may remember from your high school, it's never good to have a technology class at the end of the evening. But I'll do my best for you tonight. You guys find the uh, zapper? Oh, here. Thanks. Good. I grew up here in Curaçao, and uh, when I left uh, 20 years ago, I traveled around the world. And uh, today I'm back after 21 years, and really, really happy to be back here and, and to be speaking here at TED. Uh, and I will speak to you about water. Imagine all the water in the world, the, in the seas, in the lakes, in the rivers, in the glaciers, in the ground. And as you would with, fit all that water into this one bottle. And if you want, then want to take out the potable water out of it, it would only get you two to three drops. The rest would be not drinkable because it's too saline, or not accessible, or it's polluted. A lot of people in the world do not have access to safe drinking water. Sometimes you have to walk for kilometers to get just the bare minimum for subsistence. In other countries, actually, water causes conflicts. If you look at the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, yes, a lot of it is about land, but also about having access to the water in the wells and of the River Jordan. But it would not be fair to talk about water only in terms of uh, developing countries. Also in, developing, in developed countries, more and more droughts are causing problems. In the southwest of the US, there is a drought for the last 15 years and there's just not enough water for everyone. You can see the green gardens. But also the city of Barcelona has had such a drought that they needed to import water by ship, which is extremely expensive. Also, the way we use um, water is it becoming more and more different. Today, for the first time in the history of man, more people live in cities than live in rural areas. And you can imagine that it drastically changed the way we use and dispose of water. Large companies are starting to realize this. And they're incorporating the water footprint into their corporate social responsibility. And they do that because they want to do good. And they do that for marketing reasons, but much more important they realize that the growth of companies in the coming years is coming from Asia, Latin America, and Africa. And these are places with lack of potable water. So if they want to grow, they will have to do something about the way they use water and the way they can reuse water. Well, now that I've given you a bit of a background on, on the, the state of water in the world, I want to share with you an amazing new technology on water desalination called CapDI. When you think of water desalination, most of you will think of desalination of seawater, especially here in Curaçao, that has been desalinating water since 1928. But the truth is that if you look at water desalination in general, the biggest chunk of it is water with a lower salinity. That's water that's coming from surface water, brackish groundwater, and reuse of water in industry. And with brackish water, Actually, the ratio between the amount of water molecules on the one side and the amount of salt ions on the other hand is 1,600 to 1. So there's much more water in brackish water than there is salt. Now, how does traditional water purification, water um, desalination work? Well, there's this very fine membrane with small pores, and then you push all that water through those small pores and retain only those few ions. You can imagine there's a huge amount of energy that you use to push all that water through those pores. And that begs the question, why do we take out all that water from the ions rather than taking out those few ions out of the water? And that is exactly what CAPDI does. CAPDI removes ions from water. Now let me show you how that works. CAPDI has a flow path and as you may remember, sorry, if you remember from your chemistry class, if you put salt into water, it dissolves into sodium and chloride, Na plus and Cl minus. And they, they, those ions have a charge. Yeah, those people that are going to Favio now are like, yes, I remember that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that the ions in water have a charge. The way CAPTI works is that we have two electrodes, a positive electrode and a negative electrode. 
and the water then flows through those electrodes. And the negative ions will then stick to the positive electrode, and the positive ion will then stick to the negative ions. We're taking out those few ions out of the water, and the purified water gets out of the system. But you can imagine that at some point, those electrodes are filled with ions. What we then do is we reverse the polarity. So now suddenly the positive electrode has all these positive ions, and the negative electrode has all these negative ions, and they want to go to the other side. And now here's the clever bit. Between those electrodes, we have a pair of ion-selective membranes. And those membranes prevent the ions to cross to the other side. And they trap them in a very small area, the spacer area. Now, after the regeneration, we have this very concentrated group of ions in the space air, which we can flush out of the system. So once they are flushed out, we can reverse the polarity of the electrodes again and start the process. So what we do is that we draw the ions out of the water. Once the electrodes are full, we, re we turn around the polarity, we concentrate them in the spacer and flush them out. And this goes on and on. We remove the ions out of the water rather than removing all the water from the ions. Now, what is the benefit of this compared to normal technology that's used out there? Well, first of all, we need much less energy because you're being much more efficient in the way you desalinate. And energy being the biggest consumer, the biggest cost factor in desalination is a huge advantage. But it doesn't stop there. You can imagine that those pores that normally the water has to go through are really tiny. They're about one nanometer big. And any impurity of the water that goes through that sieve will clog the membrane. But with kept the eye, the flow plot is so big that the water can just flow through without any pressure drop. So it's much more um, uh, sturdy as a technology than the, the, the technology that's used right now. Another big advantage is that kept the eye is very efficient when it comes to water desalination. Um, technology like uh, reverse osmosis being used right now for every cubic meter of water that you desalinate, half is going to waste. And especially in areas where there's a lack of water, that's a big, big problem. KPI is very efficient and we desalinate about 85 to 90% of the water coming through the, um, uh, through the system. It's much more efficient. Now, where are we using this technology at this moment? Well, first of all, we are using them in industrial water reuse in cooling towers where we can desalinate the water and reuse the water more often. This saves about 30% of the water in industry with cooling towers, and this is a huge amount. Every kept the eye that we install in a cooling tower saves enough water for 300 households. Another application where we're, where we're installing our, our technology is in wastewater. You can imagine that all the wastewater that we all produce in our houses go to a wastewater treatment plant and we take out the biggest dirt and then we dump it in the sea. But, this, but why? We can reuse that water. So by treating the water of wastewater treatment plants, we are, at this moment we are uh, using that water for irrigation for agriculture, which is much more efficient than using other sources of water. The third application that this technology is being used at the moment is in residential, especially in the southwest of the United States, where actually the, um, uh, the water that's coming into the, uh, into the houses is not of very good quality, and we have developed devices that um, desalinate the water and purify the water before it comes into the house, so that people can uh, drink the water um, without any problems and they don't have any scaling problems. Now, I will keep to my 10 minutes. Um, I hope that today uh, I've, I've shown you a little bit of this amazing new technology uh, that desalinates water um, with much less energy, much more efficient and is much more robust. And with this we're trying to change the world and make sure that everyone has access to potable water. And uh, we truly believe that KPI can become uh, the main technology to use for desalinating brackish water. Thank you very much.